All right, I'm going to hand it over to your speakers. Please give them a warm welcome. Uh, hello. Uh, today's talk, all the foreign models could be hacked. And uh, here is our team, and uh, we are from the Baidu Security Lab. I'm Shu Peng. I'm Huan Zheng. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, let's introduce first. Uh, here's the agenda of today's talk. First of all, we will introduce the fundamentals of the 4G module. Secondly, we will introduce the new attack surface of the 4G module. Thirdly, we discuss what needs to be done in order to carry out a successful attack. For example, obtain the firmware, get a shell, and so on. First, uh, we will uh, talk about various ways to discover the vulnerabilities. And uh, last, we will provide some best defense practice based on our experience. Okay, uh, this uh, picture show, showing more than 50 various 4G modules and the devices we have studied. Uh, the two rows about are some 4G routing devices and uh, some vehicle 5G devices. Yes, uh, many vulnerabilities of the 4G model uh, we mentioned today uh, also exist on 5G. Uh, in the middle, there are some CAR boxes and uh, some portable Wi Fi devices. Uh, down the bottom, uh, there are all kinds of band of 4G modules, about 30 can. Uh, most of them are PCI interface and uh, LCC packages. So, uh, what we have found, we have found several general uh, vulnerabilities of different uh, baseband chips and uh, uh, risk in several V2X 5G modules and uh, RCE, uh, RCE in more than five cars, T box, and uh, uh, vulnerabilities in all parts of 4G modules. Uh, because vulnerabilities repair is a long process, uh, so we just, uh, show, uh, just uh, show you the vulnerabilities which will have be fixed. Uh, in this slide. Okay, uh, why do we do this studies? First of all, we found that no ma uh, not many people have done relevant research in this direction before, and uh, no one is aware of the security problem and the wide impact of the foreign model. So we want to shed a light on more uh, directions of security research. For example, uh, cars now have uh, networking traffic, uh, networking functions, but uh, it seems that no one has attacked the T box or uh, it's called, uh, sometimes it's called TCU. Uh, there are also security issues with the baseband. Uh, baseband security is uh, really important. Researchers uh, usually talk about the uh, baseband security of Qualcomm and uh, Samsung. In fact, there are many other baseband chips such as uh, Intel, Huawei, ZT, MTK, uh, Marvel, Ublos, and so on. And uh, compared with mobile phones, it's uh, easier to analyze through the 4G model. Uh, we will also introduce some new and effect effective attack surface and methods. In short, the goal of the slide is not only to introduce some special uh, vulnerabilities or foreign model, but also to provide you with some new ideas, methods for a successful attack. Okay, we can see the 4G module everywhere. IoT devices could connect to the internet through the 4G drive, um, modules. For example, we can control a car remotely by the APP. It seems the communication system of the car is online all the time. Maybe some process establishes and maintains a long-running TCP connection. Uh, there are other devices such as like 4G Wi-Fi, 4G router, TK's vending machine, uh, our laptop, and some industry uh, devices, even the slot machine in Las Vegas. Uh, there, may, uh, there are many three interfaces. Uh, interface in fact, uh, the uh, internal structure is the same, we will say later. Uh, on the left is the circuit board stress of the vending machine. Uh, we can see a module with mini PCI interface blood in, in on the right. Uh, there is actually an ARM processor motherboard uh, running Linux or Android system. On the right uh, is the Telus mode stream 4G module, uh, which implements uh, navigation, mobile, remote control system upgrade, and other function. Uh, the module is attached directly to the motherboard. 
Uh, in this slide on the left is the uh, industrial 4 G route. Uh, we can see that uh, mini PCI interface module on the motherboard. In fact, it's a common route as a slot to implement the function of internet access. Uh, the device on the right is a bit special. It's a powerful Wi-Fi device, but it doesn't have a separate 4G model. It uses the ZTZX chipset. In fact, it's also a 4G model. The chip in the module is uh, attached to the PCB board, which uh, implements networking, driving Wi-Fi, running HTTP service, and other functions. Uh, there are many other devices designed in this way, uh, such as uh, some low-cost 4G router. Uh, let's look at the structure of the 4G model. In fact, uh, the 4G model is a complete uh, computer system. ARM CPU and the baseband system are integrated in the main control chip. They all use the NAD flash, which has a large shortage space and low cost. And uh, there, are on, uh, there are other chips, such as power management, uh, radio frequency chips, and uh, so on. Uh, let's look at the software. Most of the foreign modules are embedded the uh, Linux system and a few RTOS systems. Uh, okay, this is a picture of the internal uh, in that in, in structure of the Qualcomm EC20 module with, with the top shade removed. Uh, the memory chip is NAD flash plug uh, DRAM memory, which is integrated into a chip. Uh, by looking at the model, the flash is uh, BJ162 point. Uh, if we, are, we want to read or modify the data inside, we need to buy the corresponding chip socket. Uh, so how do the module work and how should they be used? We can see that the upper left corner is the LCC module of founder technology. We build a minimal system for it, including power, uh, supply, a SIM card, a USB interface. Yes, uh, all devices communicate with the 4G module, use the USB cable. First, we need to install the corresponding drivers in the operating system. Uh, when the module is plugged in, uh, the operating system loads the corresponding driver uh, according to VID, PID, and the interface number. Uh, then the system uh, generates a network card and gets uh, the cor corresponding IP address, then assigns the internet. Uh, the 4G model usually supports a multiple connection mode, and each mode has different kernel module or drivers. Uh, for example, uh, the upper part of the slide shows the PPP and RMNT modes. Uh, when the dialing is successful, the device will get an IP address from the operator, just like the IoT device directly gets a public IP address. Here, uh, the one zero network segment is also considered a public network address. Another way, for example, in RNDS uh, or ECM modes, the 4G module usually has two network cards, uh, one dial first to get the public address from the operator, and another network card is connected to the IoT device using one two network segments. It uh, looks like the 4G module became a router and the IoT device assigned the internet through this router. This second part is the part they can understand. Uh, here I mark the RNDS and ECM modes because this, uh, these two modes don't require additional drivers, uh, particularly convenient to us. So now mo oh, most of the 4G modules are using the modules using this mode. Uh, the T-box in the car is uh, this way. So you see the security of the 4G module has turned into the security of the Linux system uh, explored in the network. Uh, let's introduce some new attacks, attack surface. As we said earlier that uh, most of these 4G modules have, have an embedded Linux system, so why is their operating system? Uh, many reasons, such as supporting 
two, three, four G, which requires a computing result. And uh, for example, automobile manufacturers often need to run their own program in people to achieve remote control and the other function, which requires uh, require module with uh, secondary development. Uh, now let's uh, analyze the uh, text uh, surface of the 4G module. As we said just now, all the current 4G module have a complete Linux, state, uh, Linux operating system. At the same time, we found that uh, most uh, modules now use RNDIS or ECM networking modes. It's, it means that the module will be assigned a separate IP address. This provides a chance of attack. Linux opening system often has some listening ports or uh, uh, connect to the cloud for OTA updates uh, or remote management. Uh, now it has a separate IP. Uh, we can directly assess uh, this port, uh, intercept its IP link, and do some uh, MITM attack and uh, so on. So now the, 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 the attack is uh, essentially the task to analyze the hot symptoms system security. Uh, when the Linux hot are exposed to the internet or intranet, um, but wait, it seems that we can't set the, the separate IP unless in the same land, such a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, let's talk about uh, some extended uh, attack surface. Uh, the 4G module is a wireless cellular device connected to the operator's network, but some operators, due to uh, configuration errors, don't have network isolation, so clients can access uh, IP or each uh, or other devices, and uh, all the 4G modules about 2G GSM mode. Uh, because of the security problem of GSM, we can use a feedback station to monitor and modify traffic. Uh, also, can obtain IP links and access ports. And uh, there are also many third parts uh, service and added to the module, such as the uh, car control service. Uh, now let's uh, summarize the attack ideas. First of all, we need to collect enough information and explore uh, uh, vulnerabilities through uh, and explore uh, when uh, vulnerabilities through get a shell from where analysis network uh, uh, network traffic analysis and so on. Uh, there may be a lot of reverse engineer work here, uh, mainly analyzing the process of various listening ports. Then we need to consider how to run the, our attack code and uh, we introduce the uh, traditional method. Uh, many in LAN network such as Wi-Fi hotspots and uh, uh, to assess the, the part of the 4G module to attack. And uh, the new attack method, we can use the incorrect configuration of the operator network to transform the local LAN attacks into a very wide range of remote line attacks, which can generally increase the scope of the attacks. Uh, in addition, because of forges, uh, because of forge spots, uh, we can we have a way of, a way to fully control the IP link of the nearby 4G module. We can directly directly assess its port and run our attack code. Uh, with this attacking ideas, it seems very easy to attack the 4G module. Uh, let's first talk about uh, using feedback station to attack. Uh, because clients can't identify whether the base station uh, uh, is real or not in GSM network, we can build a feedback station system to attack and control traffic. Uh, interestingly, this attack is effective for all all four G modules, and uh, the problem will uh, proceed for a long time, uh, regardless uh, of whether the operator shuts down the 2G base station or not. It's not too difficult to build a fake base station, but uh, previous people uh, have not solved the problem of auto attachment. If it doesn't uh, attach uh, automatically, uh, client needs to select to the fake base station manually. 
uh, inspired by pseudo base station in China. We can improve the C2 uh, parameter in GSM broadcasting channel, and the client will automatically connect to our fake base station. Uh, C2 is the cell reselection parameter. Uh, the larger the value, the more client tends to connect to the base station. Uh, we can build uh, our fake base station via software radio such as uh, Blade RF and uh, yet BCI system. But we need to change the value of C2. This parameter is not set in yet BTS. So let's uh, hard code it uh, in the source code. Uh, set it to maximum and uh, recompile it. Here we need to remind you that uh, it's uh, illegal to build a fake base station, although this uh, attack is very e effective. You can type it in shade both and uh, show in the finger on the right. In order to force the downgrade of the 4G module to 2G, you need to build uh, interfere with the software radio equipment uh, such as sending some uh, white noise interference in the current 3G and 4G band. Uh, this is also illegal. You just need to know that uh, uh, this method is effective. Finally, the 4G module automatically attached to our fake base station, like the whirlpool. Uh, the lower red, uh, red figure shows that the C2 value is already very high, usually around the 70. So we can now fully control the IP link, monitor the IP data transmission, access the point, run our epoch, and uh, modify the date. The most commonly approach used is to set the ports, such as SSH and other services. Let's talk about uh, uh, attacks through the operator's intranet. We, we have just uh, implemented uh, IP links to access the nearby devices, but is there a way to attack remotely? Uh, most uh, operators uh, send uh, uh, a uh, 10 or 172 network segment to uh, segment address uh, to client, but many of them don't have a network isolation. So, uh, such as China Unicom and uh, China Telecom. At the same time, most uh, 4G modules don't have a firewall enabled. This means that we can directly access the port uh, or other Clients throw the pulse scan. The picture on the right is the result of scanning open pulse or ADB and telnet service on the uh, intranet of the operator. You can tell that many clients have those pulse open. Uh, more interestingly, we can measure a wide range, range of attacks through private, uh, private, private APN. Private APN is the tech, uh, technology that clients connect to their intranet server directly through operator's tunnel line, just like a VPN connection. Client and the server uh, communicate with each other through one zero line segments. Special SIM card and APN aside point are required. This kind of connection is widely adopted by most car, com uh, most car companies and uh, commonly seen among well-known IoT equipment such as China's Yobo vending machine. And uh, uh, all clients in this uh, intranet are equipped with the same type or made by the same company. So we can look for vulnerabilities in such device, then launch a massive attack. As a result, we gain full control of all these devices. So how, how can we get the configuration of the APN set point? For example, so from where, uh, from where analysis and uh, log analysis, and how to connect to the target operator APN network. Uh, we can detach the eSIM chip on the motherboard and uh, attach it back to our 4G module and uh, use the uh, AT command to configure uh, the correct APN aside point. So now we can connect to the manufacturer's private APN network and start the port scan and the hack. Uh, I just introduced some new attack surface. Let's uh, implement the attack pre uh, preparation work. 
To get ready for a successful attack, you need to complete at least one of the following. Get firmware, get shell, or obtain network traffic. In general, get, getting the shell is the most influential. After getting the shell, it's easy to get firmware and the network data. But sometimes it's not always possible to get the shell. Uh, let's take a closer look at how to achieve it. First, uh, uh, I will introduce several methods for obtaining firmware. It seems the method, uh, if this method don't work, there is an uh, ultimate method, AAD flash dump. Uh, we can get the firmware by downloading, uh, by downloading the firmware update program from the official website and uh, unpacking it. This finger shows the firmware update program of a well-known 4G uh, Wi-Fi device. Uh, we easily get the Linux system partition uh, inside by unpacking the .exe file with Beanwalk. Uh, the firmware can be obtained through the manufacturer's update upgrade tools. Uh, most manufacturers have provided the upgrade tools to the developers. For example, Qualcomm, <coughs> Qualcomm's module have a Nether 8 recovery mode, which is assigned by short circuit some solder points. You can get the update tools from vendor test support, uh, which contains the initialization files for all uh, partitions. We can see uh, that the tool contains the initial image of all partition. We need to focus uh, focus uh, on system.mg. This file uses the UBIFS file system. We can use the UBI reader to, to successfully extract the file format and get the final Linux file system. If we can't get the uh, upgrade tools, uh, is the Ultimate solution. AMD flash dump. AMD flash dump uh, is more uh, complex to read and uh, modify than EMIC flash. Uh, the lower red corner chip is a common BG63 chip. It's very small and needs special AMD program to read and write. After dumping the uh, uh, after dumping the chip, we can use the beanwalk to identify the file system. Uh, let's introduce how to get the shell. Uh, where do we get the shell? If we can get the shell, it may it will be more convenient for us to view process, fields, networks, and the debug vulnerable uh, programs. It's very interesting that many foreign modules use a common password, OE Linux 123, and uh, in some times, the passwords may not be required. In addition to serial ports, you can also use some remote management tools such as ADB, Telnet, SSH, and so on. Uh, this service can be obtained uh, by port scanning. Other methods, such as getting a shell from AT command. After the module is connected, the USB interface will be virtualized with several serial ports, such as DVTTY UB0, so which AT command can be sent. According to the menu, we can send an AT command to open the ADB service, uh, or some module could uh, execute system command through sending an AT command. If none of this work, we still have an ultimate way to modify NAD flash, add a telnet process to the startup script, and reattach the NAD flash back. Let's look up, uh, let's, let's look at how to get uh, network traffic. We can build a 4 base station system. Uh, where is the 4G base station? Because it's used for the search. Uh, compared with the 2 base station, building 4G will be more stable, convenient, and fast. As you can see in the figure on the right, our client automatically con connect to the 4 base station and gets the IP address. We can use Wireshark to monitor the traffic. Uh, 
We use SRS LT 4G base station system in this method, which is much more convenient uh, uh, installation than OEI. Finally, we need to write a SIM card. We need to buy a readable SIM card and a reader. Uh, note uh, that uh, note that these SIM cards are only used for security testing, not for other illegal things. We need to write the correct IMSI KIOP to the SIM card to ensure that uh, these parameters are the same as those in the SRS LTE. Finally, we start our 4 base station and uh, it works perfectly. In fact, no matter whether it's a 2G base station or 4G base station, it contains a large number of configuration items. Uh, time solution, uh, time relations in this talk will only explain the most uh, important to you. Now let's have a recap. Uh, what information can we get from this uh, uh, preparation? Uh, most likely, uh, the shell will be captured. Then the firmware symptom and the network traffic will certainly be captured. These are essential for the following up availability menu. Okay. Okay. Supong just talked a lot about attack surface and preparation for attacking 4G modules. Now let me show the critical vulnerabilities we find in detail. Uh, let's focus on system management uh, vulnerabilities first. Usually, 4G modules uh, runs Linux systems. Uh, Linux system probably uh, start many remote management services uh, such as SSH, uh, Telnet, and the web server. Uh, we can use fast scan tool, uh, fast fast scan tools uh, like uh, mass scan, uh, which can scan the port opening status in just a few minutes. Uh, for example, uh, we find uh, a 4G module or open port 23, uh, which means the telnet service is started. Uh, in most cases, uh, telnet uh, need password to log in. Uh, we can extract the ATC password file from the firmware and then correct it by using Hashcat tools. And if you are rich, uh, you can buy a lot of GPU to speed up the crack. Uh, 4G modules uh, generally are not using one machine, one secret key, or one secret password uh, strategy. So if you successfully crack the password, uh, which means that you have just cracked the password of all 4G modules of this manufacturer. Uh, once we get the password, uh, we can successfully log into the file system, uh, log into the system remotely and this device is ours. Uh, in addition, uh, we find that many well-known manufacturer of 4G modules has open remote ADB services by default. Uh, we only list uh, some of them in this table. Uh, in fact, some manufacturers, uh, some automobile uh, manufacturers, uh, when it costs, uh, also open remote ADB services by default. What's the consequence of this? Uh, we can simply use ADB tool uh, to connect the port 5555 of this module. And in most cases, uh, without authentication, uh, we can get the shell remotely so we can hack it. And there are many other type of system management services vulnerabilities, uh, such as a weak password for web management services and even SSH that do not require password uh, are funded on some cars. And some manufacturers, in order to convenient the repair of the 4G modules, uh, they hide back door, they hide back door in some external monitoring port. Uh, maybe you can use the back door to open Telnet or do something dangerous. I will talk about uh, an, inter an, an interesting case uh, like this on the next page. This is a, this, this, uh, this bug was caused by a secondary development of 
for the module on a card T box T box. Uh, we reported this problem to manufacturer six months ago, and the manufacturer has completely fixed it. And nowadays, some cars can unlock and open its engine remotely through mobile phone app, uh, which aroused our interest. We bought this car T box uh, from uh, from the uh, auto parts shop. Uh, with this capability, uh, the cap capability is it can use a mobile phone app to open its uh, door or, and start its engine. Uh, first, we dump the f firmware with NAND NAND program, program, and we find a process listening on 24XXX port. And when we use IDA uh, IDA to scan the string of this process, we find uh, a telnet related string. Uh, let's analyze it. As you see, we find a dangerous function. Uh, this function passed the received data from that port and build a command to execute. As the picture shows, uh, it can be used to open telnet this device. We analyzed the logic of the protocol uh, uh, of this port. Actually, it used the PKI system, RSA certifications, and uh, uh, AES encryptions. Uh, but we find there are multiple vulnerabilities in uh, this, uh, such as uh, the AES key is hard coded in binary, uh, and we get the RSA provide uh, provide key from the file system. And the password of the, uh, the private key, we can guess it. Uh, so we can use it to generate public key. Uh, and we use those problems to bypass the TRS uh, certification successfully. After reverse engineering, uh, we write the exploit code like this. Uh, as expected, we finally start up the Telnet D service on this T box through this port. And using uh, by using this exploit. However, uh, Telnet D in this mode requires password verification. So here comes the new uh, problem: What's the password is? Is we use the most powerful four piece of NVIDIA 2080 Ti graphic uh, card to crack the password. A day later, we finally uh, got the password. The password is very complex. Uh, include, include big and little case charts, numbers, and special charts. Uh, so now we have a root shell of this T box. So how can we control the car through uh, th this root shell? First, uh, le let's learn how remote control of vehicle is implemented. First, uh, the red dotted line in this figure. Uh, represent the 4G module. It has a long connection with the cloud server. Uh, the uh, 4G module loca lo located in the T box and located in the MPU of T box. Uh, when the door, uh, when the open door instruction is issued from mobile phone app, uh, the 4G module uh, received the instruction. A process in MPU communicate with MCU through uh, the series port. Uh, another process in MPU, uh, yes, uh, another process in MCU that receive the instruction and pass it and dispatch to to canvas and the door open. I think this could be the easiest way to. Uh, control the car. As we have get share of the MPU, MPU, so we can write a program to record the data, uh, the data that MPU write to MCU. So when we want to hack another car, uh, the step is we use the uh, exploit we write before to start its telnet and get a shell and execute execute a new program to replace the data. Uh, we recorded before, so the door will open. The most important question is how t 
to run our attack code or how to access that port. Do you remember that attack server is uh, the attack method that Supong uh, just uh, uh, mentioned before uh, through a fake base station uh, operate internet or Wi-Fi hotspot we can access that port by running uh, the exploit without touching the car. Uh, if the car manufacturers use the private APN network without isolation, uh, everything will become simple or terrible. Uh, in the right picture, uh, we entered the private APN network of this T-box, uh, so we can scan the port 24XXXX, and we find there are many devices were open this port, so we could attack many devices at the same time. Uh, maybe we can use this ranged attack method to build a zombie cast team, just like the things in Fast Fusion 8. Next, let, uh, let's talk about the vulnerability in FOTA. FOTA is a way to upgrade firmware. We find that uh, some 4G modules frequently check whether uh, the, the, the current version is the latest. Uh, some devices check update when the device start up, and some are every 40 minutes. In this case, after reverse engineering, we find uh, that he logged into a FTP server to check for new firmware version because the FTP username and password is hard coded. Uh, we can use it, we can use, use the FTP password to log in the FTP server successfully and after logging we can download all the versions uh, we got. Wait for a second. Yes, uh, we can download all versions of the firmware of all devices. So, uh, we probably get the old firmware version. Uh, but this is not the craziest thing. Uh, we find that this FTP account has writable privilege. So, we can, uh, and uh, another good news, uh, the 4G modules uh, did not verify the firmware file uh, in the FTP, so we can use the right bulb privilege to upload a new firmware with backdoor uh, to the FTP server, and uh, the f uh, there are many, many 4G modules of this manufacturer will download the new firmware automatically and upgrade to it. That means, that means we can hack all 4G modules of, of this manufacturer in just uh, less than one day. Uh, so that's a ni nice day, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we have just talked about the problem on the FTP, uh, FOTA server side. Let's look at the vulnerability of the FOTA client side. We find that some 4G modules listen to some port for FOTA. Uh, for example, in this case, we find this 4G module listened to the port uh, 45XXX and it used to receive the upgrade command. Uh, this port was originally used for inter-process communication, but it was incorrectly bound to public, bounded to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, not local host. So we can send data to this port remotely. And after crack the data exchange protocol to this car, uh, this port and reverse engineering the structure of the uh, upgrade uh, firmware file, uh, as you can see, the structure of this uh, firmware file is very complicated. It, it costs us a long time, but we finally get it. So we can, so now we can make a new firmware file with vector and force the 4G module upgrade to it. So we hacked it again. Almost every 4G module has its own AT command uh, passing process. 
and some manufacturers uh, imp implement some customer cap capabilities. For example, uh, only the factory engineers know, know they, they know some hidden AT command. Uh, if you can find them out, maybe you can open the ADB service uh, through the hidden instructions or open, te uh, open ADB or something. Uh, we mentioned it before. Uh, in another case, AT command injection vulnerability is also allowed. For example, this following picture uh, in the left uh, is an introduction for adding root in the development document. Uh, we analyze the, uh, we analyze the system command called here deeply. Uh, we find that the command injection vulnerability. In the image on the right, we append ls string to the AT command uh, and the written content shows the LS command executed success successfully. That proves that the command injection vulnerability in AT command passing. In general, the AT command can be only executed uh, on the, the USB series port, uh, but some 4G modules uh, they support they support use of SMS to execute AT commands. It's, it's usually used for remote control. Uh, if we can find an AT, uh, if we can find an AT command injection vulnerability in this scenario, uh, we can exploit the bug remotely by sending an attack message to it. In fact, we did find such pro uh, we did find some uh, uh, some problem in some 4G modules like this. Uh, this is a 4G module that support use SMS to execute AT commands. In this case, we find it requires a password in the content to verif uh, verification. Uh, if the password is right, uh, it will execute the AT command in the a uh, SMS. But the way uh, the way he used to verification is too weak. Uh, still, the old problem. The password is hard coded in binary, and every device the, the pa password is the same. And we can get it from uh, 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 from the firmware once we get uh, one device. Um, this is the, that that 4G modules support uh, AT command uh, using SMS to to control it. Uh, actually, we find a command injection vulnerability in passing SMS AT command. The command name is set FCSN. And finally, we can get a reversed shell by simply send a text message to it. We hacked it again remotely. There are many other successful cases of attack because this talk the uh, limit of 50 minutes, I cannot talk about them detail one by one. Uh, let me talk about some other interesting cases quickly, uh, such as we can use uh, the JAMA to uh, attack the 4G module, uh, use, and then using the main in the middle, and combine with uh, some browser vulnerabilities, such as zero day or end day, to interesting, uh, interesting the IYI of our car. And the debug process on the 4G model is also an attack surface. Uh, DDoS it to death that may cause the car lose connection uh, with the cloud server for a long time. Uh, and the IPv6, uh, even if the 4G model has in enabled IP table, IP tables firewall, uh, but s sometimes we can still access th that port. Why? Because the IP6 tables are not enabled, uh, we can simply bypass the firewall uh, by using IPv6 address. And almost every 4G Wi-Fi use eight-digit password. Eight-digit password. That means the password is only number n numbers. It's it's weak password. Uh, we can use DOS attack to get the handshake packet. And then crack the password with uh, many uh, graphic uh, card like uh, NVIDIA 2080Ti uh, in a few minutes or a few seconds. 
after crack the password, we are in the same internet of the 4G module. We can launch the uh, further attacks, such as we can attack the, um, the system management of the 4G module, or we can attack uh, all devices connected to the 4G module. Uh, in the next chapter, uh, let's talk about the suggestion for defending against uh, those attacks. Uh, we have talked about uh, uh, a lot of attack methods that and ma uh, vulnerabilities detail before, and it seems that there are many problems. So, how should we uh, do? We uh, we can avoid those problems. After communicating with many 4G module manufacturers, hardware manufacturers and car manufacturers, well, uh, we find that they did not realize there is a completely, uh, completely op operating system in 4G modules. Uh, sometimes there are many, uh, there could be many operating system on a motherboard. Uh, for example, there could be a three, uh, three operating system on a T-Box motherboard. Uh, uh, if one of the system has problem, it may affect each other. Uh, it may uh, affect each other. So, so first of all, we must identify uh, those systems, uh, their IPs, and next we should check the listening port, uh, ex especially uh, those ports that can be accessed remotely. Uh, we have found many many high risk vulnerability in most uh, of the listening port listening port process. Uh, if not absolutely necessary, we should not listen in port. How much time do you have left? Two minutes? Yes. And be, uh, uh, and be uh, aware of uh, network ac access by using 4G interface. Uh, many people think that 4G channel is secure. Uh, but actually, hacker can play main in the middle easily through the fake base station. And another problem is that we find that 95% of IP tables rules in the 4G modules uh, are empty. It's dangerous. So uh, we think we think the simplest way we think the simplest way to defend this uh, uh, attacks is to uh, let the developer learn how to use IP tables uh, well. Uh, here, uh, thanks to our team's member. Uh, you know this is our teamwork. We have full ana analysis over 50, uh, 50, 50, yes, five zero uh, devices. Uh, this is our talk about security uh, research of 4G modules. I hope that our work can give you some in inspiration. If you have any question, uh, you can email to us. Uh, thank you for listening.